Listen, I want to be South Africa's best manga guy. Maybe create my own anime one day. To do that, I have to make my characters come alive. Which means I have to learn to do that from the best. With help from Comic on Africa. Today, I do just that. My name's Awadi, and this is... In this episode of Anime Manga Otaku, we speak to Gabe Kunda. Kamehameha! Did you guys know that Gabe is a first generation born Ghanaian who went from teaching to voice acting only four years ago? Gabe's worked for massive companies including Funimation, Disney, WB, TBS and CNN doing not only character voices that you are aware of such as Kaburagi in Decadence, Rubalt in Dragon Ball Super, Fisher Tiger in One Piece and fan favorite Rock Lock in My Academia. But you've also heard his voice over on trailers for, you know, these ones. Wonder Woman 1984, Tenet. Big movies are back in theaters now. Clouds, Witty PG-13. Don't miss brand new holiday episodes of the Casa Grandes and The Loud House. Dark Ages, a Miracle Workers anthology. Premieres January 28th on TBS. The Alienist, on you tonight at 9 on TNT. And the cool thing is, I get to talk to him. Hey, Gabe. Hey, what's going on? So, Gabe, I'm just going to jump right into it. What is it like to voice My Academia's Rock Lock. Man, uh, so Rock Lock, um, which is actually so funny. Um, his name over the last year, I think, they did a change of his name for the oh. um, the, the simul dub, which is probably, you're probably hearing it here first. Um, so it's, it's, it's no longer Rock Lock, but it's Lock Lock. Um, in Japanese, the direct translation is Roku Roku, R-O-K-K-U, R-O-K-K-U, I believe that's how it's spelled. And if you directly translate it, it's Lock Lock. And so somewhere along the line, it was Rock Lock, and now it's Lock Lock. So it's kind of cool, but I still answer to both. But anyway, um, it how is it playing Rock Lock? It, it is, it's a dream. It really is a dream. And it's, a, it's something that I cherish um, so much because he is, uh, you know, the first uh, black character, African American character in the show, um, mm. to my knowledge. He, you know, it, it, it's very symbolic for me. Um, I think also because my little brother also watches the show. And I, it's funny, I didn't tell him that I was Rock Rock. I just wanted him to kind of figure it out on his own. And uh, he watched it and was like, wait a minute. Are you in my hero? <laughs> yeah, I am. And he went That's insane. blew his mind. And he was just, it was just something that he's been watching from season one all the way now. Like he, he, you know, that's all he consumed. And to find, to hear his brother in that role and portray it the way, you know, that I, I tried to do, um, it was massive for him. And so I think if anything, the feeling of inspiring my little brother and also all the other black and brown kids out there who saw that or who heard that mm. i think that's the best feeling for me I, I i honestly it's it's that's what kind of um that's what drives me in terms of what i the work that i do yeah i guess the following question would be with my academia being so huge right now was the audition for rock lock memorable in any way I, I, yeah so so for for rock lock it was memorable in the sense of like i again i didn't know who he was and i i just came in and i did what i did and then i had a callback audition at funimation studios and so i went in there and then they showed me the sequences and stuff that he was in and i was like oh this is that show my Hero Academia, like this is the show that everybody's like raving about. And that's when I lost it in the booth. I was like, oh my gosh. And it's funny, the director was kind of looking at me through the through the window like, uh, 
are you okay? It's like, but, but you don't understand. Do you understand what, what, what you're working on right now? Like, I'm, t- you know, I'm over here talking to him. Uh, and so we did it. And then, you know, she let me know. She's like, yeah, you, you got the part for sure, uh, 100%. So both you and Rocklock are in what is dubbed a mixed to interracial marriage. Myself, a descendant of mixed people. I, with a couple of other fans, are fascinated by what's it like playing a character that has similar life experiences to you. Man, it, li, li, I, I tell you, it's, I didn't realize it until, because I, up until that point, I mean, I, I, I knew about my hero, but I didn't really know a lot of uh, the in-depth. I was, I came from like the Dragon Ball Z and that kind of thing over, and I kind of skipped over my hero. But specifically with, with, with Rock Lock's arc, I didn't know that he was married. I didn't know that he had a kid or anything like that. I mean, don't mean to spoil anything if nobody knows the, the thing, but I didn't know any of those things. And so when I saw the scene, when we were dubbing it, I was like, wait a minute, is she? I was like, that's literally different. <laughs> but the only thing that's different is the fact that I don't have a kid. I have a dog, which sometimes makes me feel like I have a kid. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, I mean, it was it was like mirrored so perfectly. And I told my wife, I was like, man, we need to go like because we sometimes uh, before the pandemic, we were going to conventions and stuff and getting invited to go to conventions. And I told her, I said, like, well, we have to dress up like Rock Lock and his wife and just have like a fake yeah, baby, steal yeah, somebody's yeah. baby or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of, um, uh, you know, pretend. Uh, but it's 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 a, it's a mind blowing though. It's cool because it's like, the director didn't know that I, you know, I was, mm-hmm. my, my wife, she's Salvadorian. She's from El Salvador. Mm-hmm. Um, and she didn't she didn't know that, yeah, you know, I was in a, mm-hmm. uh, a interracial relationship or anything like that. It just kind of happened, that it's just mm-hmm. so happened that he was in an interracial relationship. And I'm like, that is, that's wild. That's first of all wild that that's happening. But it, it, it just, I guess for me, it connects me more to the character. So now I, I, you know, a lot of times in acting, you you need to find something that you connect to so you can be yeah. able to, you know. And and for me, the the first point was the fact that I'm an Afri- I'm African American, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I, you know, and so I'm black, and and Rock Lock is clearly black, so mm-hmm. I was connecting there. And so mm-hmm. now when you've added the relationship in there, I'm like, I'm connecting there again. The only thing is I don't have a kid, but I can imagine what would happen if I did have a kid and then you know, we went through some circumstances and stuff. So it, it, it's, you know, I, um, I'm sorry, long story long. It's amazing. It's, it's a great uh, feeling to, to see that kind of mirroring. I bet you if the writer heard about it, he'd be like, that's crazy, that's awesome. So you mentioned Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z continues and probably is one of the biggest anime that still remains today but you also briefly played a character in the show Rubalt. now i'm not sure if Rubalt's ever done this because there are a few episodes that i've missed but Rubalt's never said the kamehameha right so as a fan yourself and as a dragon ball z character we need to get Rubalt to say the Kamehameha. Yeah, let me see. I think Rubot. You gotta have a voice like this. All right. <laughs> I'm Rubot. Kamehameha! That is so cool. <laughs> Thank you, game. Anyway, back to the interview. You seem to really enjoy voice acting. And one thing that I'm curious about is how did you get started? Voice acting isn't a common career that most people would go into, and with immigrant parents from Ghana, it might not have been the first thing they ever pictured you doing. What was your journey into what for most is a dream career? Yeah, so uh, I, I was it, back in high school, um, I was in my biology class, and my teacher was making us read out loud um, passage. And I remember I started reading, and I was like, man, this is so boring. So then finally, I started like, pretending as if I was like a TV narrator. And um, I started doing it very epically, like the manga otaku show is for all the otaku fans. You know, just like, just kind of doing it like that. And um, and people, and mind you, at that age, uh, at that age, I didn't have a low voice. So it kind of sounded like the manga otaku show is, you know, very high pitched and stuff. Uh, but my teacher, it's funny because kids actually started paying attention and my, my, my biology teacher told me, you know, you should really think about getting into voice uh, or, or get, uh, doing the announcements for school. Um, and the announcements was more like, you know, welcome to Summit High School. We are, here's what's going on in the day, you know, go to lunch and this and that. And they're selling cookies in the hallway this morning and all, all types of stuff. But 
So I was like, okay, I'll look it up. And I went over there and I asked one of our uh, our principals if I could audition to do the announcements for school. And she's and he was like, yeah, sure, absolutely you can. Here is a script, uh, go back, listen to it, and we'll bring you back to audition. And so I went home and I, I, I went on YouTube and looked up announcers and stuff like that, just how to be an announcer, how to announce stuff with my voice and stuff. And then I came upon this video called Million Dollar Voices. And it's on, it's on YouTube now, you can see it. Um, it's, it has Don LaFontaine, who is uh, considered, he, he's the movie trailer voice, the voice that you hear on movie trailers, at least in the, you know, in the US, the voice that you hear on all the movie trailers and theatrical stuff, you know, saying coming soon, in a world, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that blew my my mind because i never heard of this area before this this um uh, i never heard of uh, of a voiceover ever and that was my introduction to it and that i immediately was like i want to do this for a living i want to do this is what i want to do i immediately know i knew what i wanted to do and which is you know that doesn't happen it comes little by little you kind of discover it after a bit um but i went back to the audition and i said yes i'm ready to do it with this inspiration of like i'm gonna do this and so i auditioned for it and i remember the the, the guy who auditioned me for it he was a teacher at our high school but he was also the announcer for the dallas mavericks uh the basketball league and he looked at me like when i finished auditioning he was like this kid's got something here that i've never heard in other other kids every, every other kid's gonna come in and say hello welcome to high school summit high school you know they, they you know they'll just read it very whatever but i came in there with like inspiration from the video i just watched and everything and so um he inspired me and told me hey you should think about getting into radio i did some radio broadcasting at our school i'm thankful that they had that it exposed me to more voiceover things um won some competitions in radio broadcasting and then from there um went to, to college and started doing more um, smaller gigs in, in terms of voiceover and finally um, created a voiceover demo sent that demo in for representation to an agency I've been looking at for a while and um, they said yeah it was, it was probably my senior year of, high, of college they said yeah we'll sign you and so right out of college I, I got into represented uh, I got representation for voiceover and I've been doing it full-time ever since it's it's crazy I initially went to high school uh, to college for music education um, music is my first love I, I love music it's, it's something I do every day and I, I just it's it's my favorite thing to do and so I was going to, after college, go and teach music at a high school, at an elementary school or middle school, whatever. But what happened was in the last year of my college year, they do this thing called student teaching, where it's kind of an apprenticeship where they allow you to go into different schools and mirror teachers and watch what they're doing. Sometimes you go in and you teach the kids while the teacher is watching you and grading you on how you're doing. It's an internship for, for, for all the purposes. And what would happen was once I got signed my senior year, they would send me, my agents would send me auditions and work. And, and it'd be a situation where I'd be teaching little kids do re mi fa so la and then i hear my phone and i'm like what's going on and i look at my phone and it's my agent calling me he's like hey we need you to do this audition for toyota can you go and, and get this done right now they needed five minutes i'm like wait i'm teaching kids i can't do this and so you know it's just back and forth and, and and they got a point it got to a point where i actually booked something and they want the people that um the people that the, the, the company wanted to hire me like within 15 minutes. Sometimes it happens where they're like, hey, we need you in 15 minutes, are you ready? And I had to hop in my car, speed home to my studio, little home studio that I had and record. And, and I had to do that for some time. And then I realized I can't teach and do voiceover at the same time. Um, and because there are times where I need to record. Sometimes I have to, um, hop in my there's been times where I've recorded in my car I've done voiceover in my car there's been times where I've done it in a hotel room under some blankets um but it'd be even harder if I was in a classroom teaching kids and then having to go and and, and do that so I, I I made the decision um to to go full-time voiceover honestly speaking to you is kind of exciting you have this retreat of making a story come alive which kind of draws me to my next question because I'm kind of curious on this does any of the voices that you play even come out in your own everyday personality? There... Uh, yes, yes. Um, 
and specifically with with uh, Rock Lock, he ha- there's a lot of moments when when things aren't going right. Like th- th- there's a scene where he's at the table with all the heroes sitting around the table and everything like that. And he's gotten sitting there kind of looking at these kids and he's like, there shouldn't be any kids here. Like, you know, why do y'all have kids going into this thing? They're getting themselves hurt. They're not even strong. Like, what are we doing? We need to move on. We need to let the adults handle this. And there's a lot of times in my life where I'm dealing with people where I'm like, why are we letting them do this? Can I just handle this myself? And we just move on that way, you know, and kind of get that fury. And sometimes it comes out there, my wife be like, oh my gosh, you, you said you kind of sound like rock lock right now. <laughs> kind of bring that down some, you know. Um, and you know, then there's there's other times where like I also um there's when I'm watching like football and stuff like that, I get super hyped and I'm like, let's go, you know? And then, you know, you have a little bit of Rubalt come out. You got a little bit of um, Fisher Tiger from One Piece come out, um, you know, a little bit of that coming out. And so that, yeah, there are definitely moments where that, 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 uh, that seeps out. Uh, but I try to keep them all tame. I feel like I'm crazy when I talk about something because it's like, it sounds like, you know, kind of like you have different voices in your head, which, you know, in some ways we do, we're voice actors, but man yes that does happen to be a voice actor must involve a lot of passion you're basically making the characters that you play kind of come to life what about your own job as a voice actor do you find most rewarding generally to be able to bring something that was once dead now alive and and, and just make people to the point where people are you know i, I go to these conventions um and i meet so many I, there was this one young girl who came up was crying and she was like you don't understand i you know i go through this i go through that and i watched my hero and your character really touched me or i watched uh you know it could be anything you know or decadence or whatever or and and, and they really resonate with it and and they feel when they see you they think feel like they see the character when they hear you they hear the character that they resonated with and they associate their lives with and they want to model after so it's like you're you know it's it's a living breathing character for them and so I, that's why i love going to conventions because i can i can be able to meet the people who are who are you know who, you know who love my work and who, who really i've been touched by the stuff that i've done or the characters that i've worked on so it's it's a blessing for sure so i'm not sure how many people knew this about you before but you do a lot of work outside of anime projects is there a difference between working between japanese anime dubbing over them and disney and perhaps things like commercials yeah um so yeah it, you know there are differences um i think the only thing that are that is the same is the fact that you know obviously i'm using my voice um and it's it's the most of the stuff for for younger medium younger kind of generation but you know disney turns tends to try to go for the entire span um but i would say the different tools i'm using i mean for anime and animation it's definitely character driven i a script with uh character design sometimes i don't have a design sometimes it's just like giving me um personality traits of that character and uh and and there i am within the confines of that script i am free to create in that world with things like disney and the things that i do for them i do a lot of commercials for them and a lot of movie announcing their movies and stuff like that with that world the world's already been built the box has already been built you even even your creative liberties your creative liberties your creativeness of it is is scoped they this is how they want you to create period there's not much you can do you can, i can't come in and say well i was thinking that this script can be read in a kitty voice no 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 like i have to there, there's there's a there's a voice they're looking for and a, and a sound that they're looking for for the specific script unlike animation where i can come in there and if i said you know what i want to try something different i can i can have the freedom of doing that there uh because anything works anything goes as long as it's true to the character and it sounds real it works so with with disney i do a lot of their promos and and, and that it is different it's different tools and and i think ultimately it has to do with acting chops and acting skills um if you don't know how to differentiate 
animation versus a commercial, then you'll be in some problems. Because if you're reading animation like a commercial, like if, if there's a script of animation that says, hey, go get that guy, he stole my dog, right? And if you come in and say, hey, go get that guy, he stole my dog, that sounds very commercially. <laughs> Instead of you saying, hey, go get that guy. He stole my dog. You know, that sounds more character-like, right? And that sounds like there's more life there. It's like, it sounds like he's actually panicked, right? And so you need to be able to switch that on and off and depending on the medium. And so, yeah, it takes different tools, different different, uh, different skill sets, I think, uh, all within the same umbrella. My mind is blown every time that you do a character. I think we've established that and I'm sure I'm not the only one so I think my question to you would be my last question to you would be what's it like to see your passion your work your voice affect other people does it ever get old when people tell you what your work means to them Oh man, it, it never gets, I, I, you know, I started doing um, cons back like j last year in January was my first, this is the day of my birthday was my first con that I went to. And it, I, I, not my first con that I went to, I've gone to cons just as, as an attendee, but I've never gone as a, a guest, a panelist or whatever. Um, and so being able to do that and to go and to see the reaction of people when they ask you to do a voice and you do a voice for them and stuff like that, like, for me, it's 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 weird in one sense because I'm like, I didn't I didn't know people cared, you know. And then another another sense, it's like, wow, like I get to kind of help make people's day or make them feel good when they hear a specific line from something I've done or whatever out of the, the things I've done. And so, it is like one of those things where it's just it never gets old. It really never gets old to put people to make people smile and and, and make them feel. Uh, Make them feel good, you know. That it, it, so it's it's yeah. It'll never get old for me. You know, like there are times where I'm sitting on the couch and I'll be going through TV and I'll see a trailer that I did. Uh, for instance, I, I'm working on the the uh, the tr movie trailers for Black Widow, the uh, the Marvel's Black Widow, and I I, I, I voice the trailers for it. So every time I see the TV, I stop and I'm like. That was me at the end. That's crazy. You know, I it, it, it never, it never makes, it never gets old. And it's like, oh yeah, that's me. Let's keep watching. No, you have to stop and listen because my entire life again, I saw that that video of wanting to become that and to now look up as an African American, specifically African. Okay, I'm, I'm African as it comes. And to hear myself, this African kid from Congo, born and raised in the United States, to hear his voice on a massive movie like that, that is gonna be shown across the world in so many, on YouTube, all these different platforms, it, it, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. And I know that if anything, it also, again, it inspires, um, it, it inspires my other African brothers and sisters who are just kind of like, I want to do the same thing. I can do this. I know I can. Cause that's what it started with me. With me, it started with a, I know I can do this. I know I can. If I just put my mind to it, if I work hard, if I do, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have any, like I literally just had my gift and an idea. And I went after it relentlessly. And um, yeah, anyway, long story long again, I'm sorry. It, but but Even it's long. definitely, that's definitely my, it never gets old. It never gets old. It, it won't. I've worked too hard, man. And, and I've seen so many things. Um, and so every time I see that, the fruits of that labor, it, it just sends me into some type of euphoria. <laughs> I guess that's it. Okay, meeting you has been amazing. I'm so much more excited for your future voice roles now than ever before. Thank you so much for the conversation. It's been awesome. Bye, Gabe. Bye, ah, thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. Thank you. Hey everybody, and welcome to another Top 10 by Comic-Con Africa. I'm Jordan. Joined by Robo Robbie. And this is our list for Class 1A students of My Hero Academia, who we think could be in the future Top Hero rankings. So, 
Let's get on our best present mic impression as we head straight into this list. Number 10, Mina Ashiro. Hero name, Pinky. Quirk, Acid. Known for being a cheerful and easygoing girl who displays a smile on her face most of the time, Mina is a highly social and excitable person. She loves to hang out with her friends and is shown to become very upset when denied an opportunity to be at a gathering. Mina's quirk allows her to produce a corrosive liquid from her body. She can control the solubility and the viscosity of this corrosive liquid. There is a limit to how long she can produce this corrosive liquid until her skin gradually loses its natural resistance to it. Mina has demonstrated a good handling on the applications of her acid quirk using the acid she creates to provide cover fire for her allies and employing it in a variety of ways. And it's because of this proficiency with her quirk that earned her our number 10 spot. Number 9, Denki Kaminari, Stun Gun Hero, Charge Ball, Quirk, Electrification. Denki's a friendly, social, energetic boy who loves to hang out with people. He's rather casual when interacting with others, including the generally unfriendly Katsuki Bakugo. Although he is also not above petty complaining or overreacting, if feeling annoyed or shocked enough. Denki may come off as blunt and reckless at times, but is always well meaning. Denki's quirk allows him to store and discharge high voltages of electricity as a sort of protective aura that electrifies anyone through contact. This aura can stun enemies, leaving them dead in their tracks, or be discharged completely, firing off in all directions for one electrifying strike. Denki has a powerful quirk and will no doubt be a heavy hitter in the future. When he gets his quirk and its backlashes unlocked, he is sure to excel, and that's why he's earned our number 9 spot. Number 8, Tsuyu Asui. Rainy season hero, Froppy. Quirk, Frog. Tsuyu is a straightforward and aloof individual who always speaks bluntly from her mind and what she thinks about others. Tsuyu prefers to be called Tsu, but only by people she views as friends. Tsuyu's frog quirk gives her the animal characteristics of a frog, which include, but are not limited to, great leg strength, wall clinging, a powerful extending tongue, and camouflaging, just to name a few. Tsuyu is seemingly capable of using all her skills limitlessly and in combination with one another, resulting in a very utility-based fighting style. Tsuyu's quirk is a toolbox of skills and possibilities making her very versatile on land and in the waters. It's this reason that Sue hopped into our number 8 spot. Number 7, Ochaka Uraraka. Hero name, Uravit. Quirk, Zero Gravity. Ochaka is described as the most laid back girl among her class, being very bubbly and a kind of airhead at times. She is often incredibly blunt without being aware of it. She is a kind hearted individual that is trying to help her parents by making it big as a pro hero. Ochaka's quirk allows her to remove any object's gravitational pull to the planet, effectively making it weightless. She can then deactivate her quirk by touching the pads of her fingers together, returning anything she had previously touched back to its original state. Ochako is a kind-hearted and motivated student that is looking to make a difference in the world and help those in need, whether that be friend, family, or otherwise. She's improving herself constantly and looking to improve in any way she can, and it's this drive and determination that has drifted Ochako into our number seven spot. Number six, Tenya Ida. Turbo Hero in Genya, Quirk, Engine. Tenya is a very straightforward, earnest, intelligent, sophisticated, and disciplined student. Although a bit clueless about personal interactions due to his strict self-view and desire to be a noble hero. Tenya is the class representative of Class 1A and takes pride in being a leader, directing the class as a team, sending people to the best place to use their skills. Tenya's quirk gives him car-like engines in each of his cars, giving him incredible running speed and extreme kicking power. He can also give himself a nitro-like burst of speed to increase his mobility and overall effectiveness. Tenya needs to fuel his engines by drinking orange juice. Tenya is a very diligent and prideful student, trying his best to live up to his family's legacy as the next generation of heroes. He has great potential and is looking to great heights and moving fast. It is this speeding towards his goals that have earned him a fast six on our list. Number five, Eijiro Kirishima, sturdy hero, red right. Quirk, hardened. Eijiro is a boisterous and outgoing guy with a fondness for the concept of manliness. 
often using the terms manly and unmanly to describe things or people he does or does not like, respectively. He is sturdy in his principles and holds to them. Eijiro is, has a clear image of the hero he wants to be, drawing inspiration from a hero called Crimson Riot. Sound familiar? Hardening gives Eijiro the power to harden any part of his body. The quirk protects him from most physical threats. Once activated, Eijiro becomes capable of enduring what would be otherwise lethal hazards, like tons of falling metal or multiple explosions, without even leaving a scratch. Even bullets are unable to pierce his skin. Aside from increased defense, Harding also grants Eijiro offensive power by turning his hardened body rough and sharp like rocks. Eijiro has proven himself to be a formidable individual on numerous occasions. He struggles and fights, putting himself before others and shielding the innocent from harm. Eijiro has a bright future ahead, and with the passion he has shown, he has solidified himself as our number 5 spot. Number 4. Momo Yaoyarozu. Everything Hero Creati. Quirk Creation. The Vice President of Class 1A, smart, beautiful, and encouraging, Momo is ready to take the world by storm. Momo is a very prudent, dedicated person who often acts as a natural leader. She is always improving herself and seeks to understand whenever and wherever she makes mistakes. Momo's quirk allows her to materialize different objects such as weapons and tools from any part of her body. Apart from living things, Momo has the potential to replicate virtually any object, no matter how complex or advanced its structure may be. She only requires understanding the atomic configuration of said object to reproduce it. Momo has a powerful quirk with an unimaginable variety of uses. It has the capability to be one of the more powerful quirks on this list. It is versatile and practically limitless in its uses. Momo has already shown her flexibility in using her quirks ability in many ways, and it's this creativity and potential that has earned her our number 4 spot. Number 3, Katsuki Bakuro. Hero name, undecided. Quirk, explosion. Katsuki, also referred to as Kachan, is the duo Taragnus of the series and Midoriya's main rival slash childhood friend. With his power, speed, and technique and intelligence alone, Katsuki could have taken the top spot of this list, but his explosive quirk often puts the teams he works on in more danger than they started with. Explosion allows Katsuki to excrete nitroglycerin-like sweat from his palms and ignite it at will to create an explosion of various sizes. Through either one of his palms, Katsuki creates fiery shockwaves that are highly powerful, destructive, and often burn and or shatter whatever they hit with Katsuki himself being immune to them, save for some recoil after extended use. Katsuki is abrasive, rude, currently angry, and looking for a fight, but he's also kind-hearted and wants what's best for his friends and never wants anyone to get hurt. He has a long road ahead of him, but we believe Katsuki can be one of the greatest, which is why he found himself exploding into our number three spot. Number two, Shoto Todoroki. Hero name, Shoto. Quirk? Half cold, half hot. Shoto is the younger son of Endeavor, the number one, formerly number two, hero. Shoto is top of his class and has one of the coolest or hottest abilities on this list, depending on which side of him you ask. Half cold, half hot allows the user to generate ice, frost, and cold from the right side of his body and fire, flames, and heat from the left. However, the user is unable to manipulate either element, only limited to producing and creating them. Shoto has had a lot of struggles in his life and still has a long road ahead. His father has made his life difficult for so long that it will be hard to get Shoto's trust back. Shoto faces his demons every day but strives to be the best he can be. Shoto has come from the bottom and is doing his best to get as far as he can. It's this fiery determination and sheer force of will that has frozen his place at our number two spot. Honorable mention, Fumikage Tokoyami. The jet black hero, Tsukuyomi. Quirk, Dark Shadow. Fumikage is reserved, serious, and focused, albeit noble and valiant as well. Though he does not talk very much and tends to directly ignore questions or requests that seem in some way pointless. When Fumikage teams up with others, he becomes more sociable, helping his teammates out, reassuring his trust in them, 
and thanking it for their efforts. Fumikage's quirk, Dark Shadow, effectively acts like Fumikage's personal guardian, functioning as a living appendage that follows all of his master's commands. It is sentient, capable of speech, and loyally protects its host, regardless of the state it finds itself in. Dark Shadow is always connected to Fumikage's body through an umbilical cord, however he does not share the same senses as Fumikage. Dark Shadow appears to possess the ability to change shape to some extent, despite being a solid entity that can interact with the material world, but said energy has a limit. Fumikage has an extremely powerful quirk that is unfortunately limited in its use as the more light is present, Dark Shadow gets weaker. He has a lot of stuff he needs to figure out before he can have a top tier quirk, but we are definitely keeping our eyes on this one, and that's why Fumikage has crept from the shadows as our honorable mention. Number 1, Midoriya Izuku. Hero name, Deku. Quirk, one for all. Well, what can we say? Except, we felt the answer was kind of obvious. Midoriya's opening line when he introduces the series pretty much did our job for us, where he mentions that My Hero Academia is the story of how he became the number one hero. Midoriya is a quirkless person, meaning he was born without any quirk or special trait. Growing up, Midoriya idolized heroes and sought to become the next greatest hero. And through a chance encounter with one of the world's greatest heroes, All Might, Midoriya's dreams finally came true. One for All is a transferable quirk, passed down from person to person and cultivated each time. One for All also allows the user to stockpile an enormous amount of raw power, allowing them to significantly enhance all of their physical abilities to superhuman levels. This results in unbelievable levels of strength, speed, agility, and durability. The user can focus the stockpile power into a single body part or spread the power evenly throughout their body. Although, focusing the power puts a great strain on the part of the body where the power is focused. Through a chance encounter, Midoriya found the path to be like the hero he always looked up to, but little did he know that very hero would be the one to make his dreams come true. Much like everyone else, we're eager to see Midoriya go further beyond plus ultra, and that day is why we gave Midoriya our number one spot. That's it for our list of top hero candidates from class 1A in My Hero Academia. Let us know in the comments if we missed your favorite student from this list and why. We do this all for you, our fans of Comic-Con Africa, so please show your support by subscribing to our channel and hitting the notification bell to be the first to get access to our awesome content. I always say my quirk would be invisibility, a hundred percent. And it was, I always want to hear what people are saying about me when I'm not in the room or what people are doing when I'm not in the room. Like that's like, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing, but like, I feel like I can get the upper hand. Like there are so many times where I get an audition from let's say a Disney or Nickelodeon and I'm like, if I could just sneak in the casting director's room to see who they're actually thinking about for this role, I know how to approach my role <laughs> when it comes to it. So yes, I am a cheater. I am, I am uh, at heart. Uh, so that would be my quirk. Oh man, um, honestly, no. I think Rock Clock has a perception of younger generation as uh, as like, we need to keep them safe and out of the way and we need to be the one to handle everything. They'll just wait when they get older, then they can come out and do something. But what I've realized within the last year and year before that, especially with the advent of TikTok and all this kind of stuff, the younger generation has this kind of creative zeal that's almost like, uh, it's definitely above even my, cause I'm a millennial, but even the stuff that I'm seeing on there, I'm like, that's hilarious and it makes sense, but I don't understand why it makes sense. And with these younger generation, they just know how to pick and pull from different creative ideas. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put this. And they're able to just be very expressive and be quick about it. Um, and really take the, 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 you know, the bull by the horns and just really make their own paths. So I'm like, yeah, I think we need those people. We need those people absolutely equipped to handle the future because they are just the way they've come up. They've come up with iPads. A lot of them, 
um, sister generation before me, like you know, behind me, they they grew up with iPads and technology, and so their minds already work that way. So I'm just like, where where are we gonna be within like 10 to 20 years? You know, where, where, how, what other innovations are there going to be? And so Rock Lock would be like, nah, you just need to sit down and just chill out. And I would say, no, lead. Yeah, I think when it comes to getting work done, I'm very much a, a like, when I have my mind on something and I want to do something, I just go after it. I, I'm dead. Let's go. Let's do it. Forget everything else. Move things aside. Like, we're after this. And so that's in that, in that says I, I see that with rock lock a lot too he just wants to get to the finish point the finish line um and he does it he definitely as i learn about him i'm like rock lock you need like your quirk is a little you know sometimes it can be a little like what really but so that's why it helps to work with the team and so sometimes my wife has to tell me like you need a team you need to you need to slow down you need to think about this you, you know whatever um and so yeah no i think there are some similarities in that sense but i am also someone who i can understand potential i can see potential i can see talent i can see that the younger generation or whatever before me they can do some really good and i feel like rock clock tries not to see that in the sense of and I think also with his thing is he has a kid, right? So like he's tried to protect, he's, you know, he's tried to be safe. He's trying to be safe for the, you know, and think about them as, you know, what if they're my kids? So I, my honeymoon was in Paris my, with my wife. Yeah, we went to, we, in 2019, for the world stood still. Oh man, I missed that year. Um, we went to Paris and we stayed there for a week for the honeymoon, and it was amazing. That was it was awesome. I, I'm I'm laughing because I'm like, the fact that he remembers that he must be a father. Yeah. Ooh. If I ever became a time traveler, what would I say to my younger self? I would say. Keep doing what you're doing. It seems as though, you know, they, they, I, I had trouble in school, a lot of trouble in school, uh, of staying focused and on my task, being uh, very studious and all that stuff. I would always think about, uh, I would use my imagination. I would always play with toys, play video games and lose myself in the world of imagination and art in that world music i would consume myself with that but i wouldn't get on my i get, i wouldn't turn in my homework on time i wouldn't do certain things on time and i'm just because i wasn't really good at school at all even testing i wasn't good at it and there were times where i felt as though i didn't really amount to anything because i saw all my other friends like doing amazing in school and i just didn't have that click and um I, you know, there were times where I wanted to go a different direction in my art and music and stuff like that. But because everybody else was doing school and, and being so good at that, I had to kind of like, you know what, uh, maybe I should just focus on getting smarter and this and that and the third and doing what my parents want me to do and all this stuff. But I would tell myself, I was like, keep doing what you're doing. You're on the right path. It may seem like now people are bullying you about your shoes. They're bullying you about the fact that you read mangas at, at breakfast. They're bullying you about the fact that you love video games and that's all you talk about you 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 love playing with your voice you love being a whatever whatever but you're on the right path and one day you're going to make a difference to some, somebody you're going to be a voice actor full time you're going to have a career that you can call your own and you're going to be able to inspire hundreds of people if you keep on the same track that's what i would tell myself and if i think if i if i would hear that as a kid I would <laughs> Superman my way to the top. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite character. Okay, I mean. Oh, bro, why would you ask me that question? It's such a. <laughs> I, 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 
I am very much. I'm a Midoriya. I'm a, I'm a Midoriya head. I just, I love his Izuku's D. Like his, his just his strivingness to be good and to 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 just be everything to everyone. I, I, just, I just, I, I love him. I really do. And I, when I, when I watched the show with my wife again, I was kind of like. I see myself in that in that kid, man. It, it's crazy. Um, but I think in terms of my favorite quirk from anybody else apart from me, maybe Todoroki. The the the, the half hot, half cold, half hot <laughs> is just like, come on, man. That's that's dope. That's really dope. And the fact that he can, yeah, there's so much. Yeah, I, that that's definitely my my favorite. I can say it looks. I think it looks cool too. But yeah, okay. Let me think about this for a little bit. Hey, I'm Rock Lock, and you asked me the question, so I'm going to tell you. I would sacrifice everything in me to make sure my family is safe. I do it over and over again. Now, Deku and the kids, you know, at first I was a little mad about it, but I understand. They would do it, so would I. <laughs> Who would I want to team up with? Let's see. Uh, well, oh man, I, I want to see, uh, you know, back in the day, Mirio, I, I would love to see what Mirio's all about, man. Uh, I didn't have much time with him, but I'd love to, I'd love to team up with him one day. I think that could be a, a, a dope matchup for sure. I, I, I have faith that Deku's gonna bring it out. I think he ultimately. Um, I'm nervous for him because I don't know how how far you are caught up on everything. But yeah, I, I'm a, I'm gonna say Deku for right now. Honestly, I I want to spend some more screen time with Hawks. I, I'd like to spend more screen time with Hawks. I feel like uh, he's kind of. There's some shady stuff going on over there, but I want to spend some screen time with him. I think he's cool. I think the way he approaches himself is dope. 